So did Apple make their computers, especially the M chip computers, just too fast? I got a funny perspective. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today. And this is kind of a funny video, so just make sure you understand that. I'm not calling anybody out or any groups of people out here. But really, I get asked the question all the time, is the M1 or the M2 or whatever, you know, fill in the blank, fast enough for fill in the blank, video editing, photo, you know, you name it. I get asked this question all the time, and we're gonna address that. And we're also gonna address, are these systems just too fast right now for what everyone expects? And we'll get, this is gonna make a lot more sense. So stay tuned to the whole video. Again, this is gonna be a fun one, and it's gonna be kind of bringing you back to my time when I was growing up, but also at the end of it, it'll make a little bit more sense. So let's get into the video. All right, so just let me just start off by saying I'm a little bit older maybe than the average you know, Apple user. Maybe, maybe not, right? When I was growing up, we had an Atari 800 in our house, 1980s, right? It was about 800 bucks. My dad saved up for a couple years to buy this thing or maybe two years or something. It's like 3,200 bucks in today's money. We had that thing, it was incredible. We had so much fun playing like Blue Max, Robotron, um, Donkey Kong, you name it, Joust, games like that. They were just incredible to play back then. I loved it. And it's some of my best memories of my childhood just growing up. Now, back then though, that thing was, when you say fast, it's a completely different beast than we're talking about today, right? There was a, a we had a tape drive to load games in a lot of cases, a tape drive, and I'll show one right here. Long story short though, it, it just loaded tapes on a tape. It took me sometimes 10 minutes for a game to load. We all sat around waiting for it and then we played it and it was just the best time ever. I just remember those times. Now I'm not trying to, remember, you know, this is not gonna be, hey, the old man saying this or this or this. Just hear me out. This is gonna make a lot of sense, trust me. So there's the Atari 800 and it's one of my favorite computers of all time. I mean, back then, nothing was easy or fast. We had a 300 baud modem. I think that was the 830. And we would sit there and wait maybe an hour just to write one line of text to somebody in a different state out there. And it felt like it was an alien to us because it's the first time we ever communicated, you know, communicated across the line. Or you played games like, you know, online that were actually across the modem. And you would type in like one line at a time, wait 10 minutes and something else would come back. It was just crazy. We had some of the best times ever. We'd also sit around for two weeks. There was a Atari magazine that came out like once every month, and it would have a program in it. You have to just put it in line by line. If you missed one character, the whole thing wouldn't work. It would take you weeks to figure it out, and then you'd actually, at the end of two weeks, have a stick man walking across your screen, but you thought it was magical because that's all you had. All right, now I'm not saying that's better or worse than what we actually have today, right, in the last 20 years. It's just completely different, and that's what I wanna talk about today when we actually ask the question, are these computers just way too fast for people right now? This is the important thing to ask, and it's gonna make a lot of sense. All right, about four years ago, five years ago, I started this YouTube channel for Apple stuff, right? Never thought I would, but I did anyway, and now I love doing it, so it's just more of a hobby for me. But I have, you know, 600 plus videos and all that kind of stuff. I do videos on just like this right here. This is my M2 MacBook Air, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. If you love this skin, check out my uh, description. You can buy one through my link. Help, help me out. I'm just kidding, but you know, you get the idea. This, this is a cool skin there. Anyways, long story short, this is the kind of videos I do. I do a whole bunch of tech videos. Never thought I would, so my life's changed a lot since those Atari 800 days. And I get thousands of questions, probably a month, and I answer about 95% of them. Now, I want them to keep coming. This is not, a, you know, I'm not saying don't keep sending them to me, but I can't really troubleshoot everything you can imagine. I'd have no time with my wife, right, honey? Yeah, anyways, you get the idea. So I'd have no time with my wife, so I can't do all that, but I can respond in certain ways, and I try to, and all those things. All right, so but that's my YouTube channel now, and I always you know, get these questions on this. It's, you know, the number one question is always gonna be, at the end of the day, is this computer fast enough? Is it not fast enough? So I get the question, is the M1 fast enough for this? Is the M2 fast enough for this? I'm a video editor, I do 4K video editing, I do 1080p editing, I have 120 music tracks. Is this fast enough? And that's kind of the question I get, probably, like I said, the number one out of all the thousands I get every month, that's gotta be the number one. All right, so let me just start off by saying these things are super expensive, all right? So they're very, very expensive, and, I, and I'll get back to this in a second. But first, my first piece of advice, and maybe the main one, is just get what you can afford. Don't worry about the speed of them. These M-series chips are all incredibly fast. In fact, they're exponentially faster than a lot of the Intel Macs just before them, where people were creating 4K videos and doing a whole bunch of creative stuff on those. And these things are even better. Even the M1 Air, which the 8 gigs of RAM and 256, it's fast enough for most things, all right? I mean, Obviously, I, I grew up with the Atari 800, like I said. I mean, I was waiting two weeks for a stick figure, and you can do things on this thing that are just incredible. This is just the, the MacBook Air as well. I mean, the things you can do on here, if you can think about them, it, are just incredible. And if you have to figure things out over the way, like let's say you have to, you know, like one, one video editing software is faster than the other, you can learn than the other one, right? And it gives you more knowledge. It gives you more 
more, I guess, personal, you know, you feel more worth, I guess, by figuring things out. Just, you know, if you have to be a little bit different, that's actually a good thing. You're learning during the entire time. You're better than the other people that aren't learning, and you end up coming with up, you know, up with different skills and stuff that can help you later in your career. So just keep in mind that these things are expensive, and my number one kind of advice is just get what you can afford, first of all. That's the first thing when I'm asking that question, you know, when I answer the question, are these fast enough? All right, coming from somebody that used the M1 Air and also the M2 Max and the M2 Ultras and stuff, I mean, I'm going to take a different approach when I have to answer these questions. Although I have to make, I have to make videos, right? And I have to, you know, I have to do some videos that are not going to be exactly like this. But I think I'm going to, like I said, just say all of them are fast enough. All the M chips are fast enough to do anything that you really want them to do. And let me just put a disclaimer on that. Again, I've used both of those, the M2 Max versus the M1 Air, and they both did the job. I mean, I was able to edit 4K videos. I was able to do music production. So it just comes down to how fast you have to wait, if there's any little bit of lag on it, how many tracks you can do in audio. Maybe it's only 80 versus 150. But all of us, and I'd say 90% of us, can, can totally handle that. I mean, there's going to be specific cases where you can't, where you're making money back from, obviously, a, very, a lot of money, actually, from what you do, or your job requires it, and things like that. So that's not what I'm talking about. If that's the case, go with that. Otherwise, just get what you can afford. Get what you need right now. And then eventually, when you become really good at what you do, you can then go out and get actually what you want, not just what you need, because you'll make money from the experience. But overall, the experience, just like I did with the Atari 800, will make you better. It'll make you better at learning things. It'll make you better at just patience and figuring things out. Maybe you can take a step back and, and just think about things a little bit before you post. Now, overall, though, I mean, my videos are not that, you know, I just do them for fun, right? But what I'm talking about is if I needed an M1 Air, I didn't have this channel, would it be fast enough for me? Totally. I mean, I probably wouldn't have bought anything past that. Obviously, I have a channel, so I have to buy other computers. Don't worry about what your friends can afford. Don't worry about all that kind of stuff. It's just really what you need right now to actually kind of hone your craft, become creative, and do the things that you really want to do in life. I mean, about a year ago, I actually did a video on just doing 1080p video editing on a 2014, I think it's a 2014 MacBook Pro, 2014 Air. They both handle 1080p for perfectly. So if you wanted to start a YouTube channel and that's all you had, you had to go buy an old Intel Mac from 2015, it could do 1080p. And I, I hate to tell you that most people are watching this in 1080p. I do 4K, but most people don't even watch it in 4K. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you have to wait a couple of minutes, right, a couple extra minutes while something's downloading or you're actually rendering or exporting something, it gives you some time to maybe go get a soda, actually pet the dog, do something in life that's going to be a little bit more enjoyable than just pumping out videos. Now, granted, I understand there's going to be cases where you need it, and that's not who I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the people that are kind of asking me if the M1 is something that you're considering, it's going to be fast enough. So this is where I call out the younger generation, and I'm just kind of kidding with this, but you guys didn't have the kind of, you didn't have to go through the same street cred that we did. We had that old system waiting 20 minutes for a game or whatever to load and all that kind of stuff. We, we had a, you know, you got a game every like year for Christmas and you went into the Christmas tree, grabbed it, threw it in. You couldn't buy download games like this. It was just a completely different experience. I'm not saying that's worse or better, right? But I think all the kids out there, all the people growing up, all even people like me that want to create YouTube channels, you need to get what you can afford first and then work your way into this computer. And everything, every single one of the M chips is going to be fast enough. I mean, every kid out there right now is trying to become, you know, the next, you know, huge YouTube sensation. When really, I mean, you should be doing that on the side and actually getting, you know, getting a job and things like that that are a little bit more normal. I mean, for me, obviously, I spent 26 years at a data center, so it gave me the ability to actually go out and buy some of the things that I want here. But before that, I couldn't afford certain computers, and I just didn't buy them because they just, I could always wait that little bit extra time. You know, they could all do what I needed them to do, especially these new M series. They're just really good computers. And, uh, you know, if you ever ask a question about the M1 or the M2 and you're looking at an Air, I mean, what else? They're faster than almost all the Intels that are in the same kind of price range there. So they are fast enough. So do I really think Apple made their systems too fast? No, I'm just kidding when I say that. In fact, obviously technology is moving forward, faster is always better, and you know, but you just have to take a perspective of what my perspective is. I mean, these things are just incredible with what you do with them. You can do anything you want, and anytime you have to struggle a little bit on a computer, it just makes you that much smarter on how you have to figure things out. And it's gonna make you better for the future. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't worry about what, you, again, your friends have. Don't worry about anything like that. Just buy what you, you can afford and actually just do what you like doing, and everything will fall into place at the end of the day, and uh, you'll notice that over time, you're not even going to notice if you have to wait that little extra couple minutes on something to export. It's just not going to matter to you. You just get used to it. Now, this might be funny also coming from somebody that has 10 Macs sitting around me, but I do have a channel. And like I said, I put my, my cred in for 25, 26 years at a data center to get here. So I have a little bit of perspective there as far as why I have all these computers. But, you know, it's a little funny coming from me, right? 
And I know everyone's childhood is better than, you know, the, the person before them or after them. It's always like you always loved your childhood growing up. And the Atari 800 was no different for me. But let me just say one thing and trust me on this. So my Atari 800 in my childhood was like me driving a 1978 Pinto. And a Pinto exploded if you got hit from the rear, right? You guys have, in the last 20 years, you guys have like a F1 McLaren or something like that supercar that you're driving, even in an M1 MacBook Air, all right? So if you come to me again and you ask me, is it fast enough? I'm gonna tell you, it's probably fast enough and you probably should just buy it if that's all you can afford. And then we'll be done with this video. But I think this video is just important to say to people because I, you know, it just seems like that's kind of all the content out there right now. They do benchmarks and tests, and I'm guilty of it too. I like to show people what's out there, obviously, and I love to show them you know, what the new Macs can do, and I'm gonna to continue to do that. But at the end of the day, you just have to take a step back and figure out what do you actually need, what are you gonna be using it for, and don't worry about what everyone else has, all right? Just worry about what you need, and, and eventually you'll be able to afford what you want. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Again, this is funny, don't kill me or anything like that. It's just kind of a, a funny take on it. And you know, I just, next time people ask me, is this fast enough, you know what I'm gonna say, all right? I think I've, I've hammered that down. Um, at the, you know, if, if you do need it for business, that's a serious thing, I understand it. If you're someone that knows you need it for something else, that's a serious thing, go ahead and buy it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I think we've gotten to a point in technology that everything is just so good, we take it for granted. And uh, when I had to do things on that old computer, it was a struggle, but I loved it and some of the best times in my life. So we'll talk to everybody soon. Funny perspective on things, I guess. It takes people's, you know, how they grew up and how, what they know. Um, but we'll talk to everybody in a little bit. Peace.